and a for your info, join the midfield left downward for runway 14 and extend downward now for your base. Join midfield left downward runway 14 and extend downward will call my base, a for your info. And I can see now I have the indication of the ILS and the glide slope here. Looks like we'll be number five for landing. <laughs> Crazy. Just another day in Farmingdale. Wind 16014 gust 17. Back in September 2020, 84 Uniform was brought into the hangar for an extensive avionics upgrade. Now, two and a half months later, I'll finally get to fly it and see all the new systems and equipment in action. The day before I made this video, I flew with a CFI who's highly experienced on the avionics install so he could guide me through their amazing features. Now, I'll get to do it as a single pilot for the first time. It's about 6 a.m. here in New York and uh, I just left the house going to the airport to fly the plane uh, for the first time after the avionics upgrade. I'm gonna take uh, the plane to Farmingdale for the first time which is the uh, airport that I did all my training so that will be exciting. Whew. Uh, uh, flying is the only thing you'll see me waking up this early on a Sunday. Whew. It's cold. So I just got to the airport and I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is the airplane is covered in frost. It was a cold night, negative temperatures, there's some humidity so there's frost all over the plane and if you know anything about frost you don't want to fly with that in your plane. Uh, it dramatically reduces your lift, changes the overall shape of the wing and most importantly it can freeze your flight surfaces and they can get stuck as you get to altitude so you don't want to fly with frost. The good news is it's already starting to melt, the sun's coming up and um, I can already see that it's melting so it's going to be about half an hour or so. I'll try to give it a little push with my checklist, try to scrap it off a little bit uh, and uh, as soon as it's melted we'll be ready to go. Joys of winter in the northeast. That's what you get. One thing to be mindful about frost is that even if it melts or you scrap it off just like I did, you're likely going to be left with wet wings and wet flight surfaces and you got to know where your freezing level is because you could go up and it will freeze again. So even though the prop wash and the wind will 
take care of wiping all of that water that's left away. Some could still get stuck in, in, in between the, the flight surfaces, the junctions there, the, the attachments. And if it freezes again, your flight instruments and uh, correction, your flight surfaces could get stuck. Anyway, just something to be mindful about. And um, if, if you get frost and then you, you are in a really cold day where the freezing levels are low, it's just good to think about like if you need, really need to fly that day. Despite the freezing temperatures overnight, the forecast showed highs around 14 degrees Celsius later in the morning. And by now, it already felt significantly warmer. So I decided it was safe to fly. It was a good opportunity for me to brush up my aeronautical decision making and remind myself of the challenges of winter flying in New York. I ended up departing almost two hours behind my original schedule, but as always, I put safety first and I knew I had made the right call. Thank you. Bricks are tested. Off we go. My age assigns me normally. Temperature is up to 11 degrees Celsius. Brookhaven traffic, uh, Grumman 84 uniform is taxiing out of the ramp and uh, we'll go to runway 15 via Lima, Brookhaven. Uniform, nice to see you. I'm gonna take an Instagram photo later. <laughs> That's good, man. That's nice, man. Thank you. Good to see you. Have a good one. Brookhaven okay, traffic, Chrome 84 uniform is number one for departure 15, away for landing traffic on final. Brookhaven. Okay, Airspeed is alive. 50. Two in traffic, and they're turning final 15 for Kevin. Finding UI. Bye. Let's call for given. Testing 1.5, 2.5.
Yes, approach to Barney, uh, Tiger 99984, uniform, do you have a request? 9984, uniform, yeah. 84 uniform, 5 miles south of Brookhaven with William Farmdale, 2.5, tracking the outside of the Charlie would like my calling. 84 uniform, 44363. 4363, uh, 84 uniform. 84 uniform, you're at our contact, I'll submit a 3019. 3019, 4 Number 6, Echo Alpha, contact, um, Brad, the approach, 123.905. Okay, Echo Alpha, Brad, the approach, 123.905. The Aspen replaces the vacuum instruments, the uh, attitude indicator and the directional gyro. And what it does is instead of relying on the vacuum system to provide the, uh, the information, it relies on the attitude and heading referencing system, which uh, comes from an antenna located right here above the panel. It's very sleek, it's bright, uh, it's very, very accurate, and uh, it really adds to the safety because you no longer rely on a system like the vacuum system that could fail. In fact, I was able to remove the entire system completely and I no longer have a vacuum pump, a vacuum suction gauge, or the, the tubes and all of that. Another nice feature of the Aspen is that it brings together all of, the, uh, of, all of your six-pack instruments. So you have attitude, you have speed, you have uh, altitude, and you have the directional gyro, and you also tur you have turn and bank, and you have vertical speed as well. So, uh, as far as instrument scanning goes, it really comes down to this in IMC. Uh, instead of scanning your instruments over and over, uh, this is where you look at, only here. It's good to have the other systems that, uh, or instruments as backup, but uh, if you really just want to look here. Um, for instrument approaches, uh, other information will come here, such as the localizer and the glide slope information. So you really look at this part of the panel only, and you can still shoot an instrument approach in IMC uh, and have all the information you need in front of you all the way down to the minimals. Now, the um, heading indicator here, this is an HSI actually, and it's slave to the GPS. And the nice thing about this is, uh, whenever you're flying um, a flight plan that you've plotted on the GPS, the HSI will automatically um, set, reset its course to the next waypoint, meaning you don't need to be fumbling with the, uh, the course indicator or resetting the course every time you go from waypoint to waypoint. Everything happens here automatically. And probably my favorite feature of the Aspen is this little blue diamond here. Um, I don't know if you can see, but that's uh, your ground track. So when you're flying instruments and you're tracking a VOR radio or tracking uh, an ILS, a localizer, or something like that, all you have to do is put that blue diamond over the uh, tip of the arrow and bang, you're, you know exactly the, the, the real ground track and direction that you're flying. Again, makes instrument flying much easier because you don't need to keep doing calculations in your hand. Other nice features are the, uh, the fact that you have your V speeds plotted here according to your POH and that's like customizable. So your VY, your VX, your climb speed and even your best glide speed so you know what to shoot for. And one last thing is if you want to go uh, a little simpler and, and just uh, look at a, what would be a normal attitude indicator, you, you can clear and it will go back to a normal attitude indicator. I usually keep everything on, but that's, that's a nice feature uh, that you have. For uniform, you can spot VFR frequency change approved. Spot VFR frequency change approved. Thank you very much. As I switch frequencies, things start getting busy. Farmingdale's Republic Airport is one of the busiest in the Northeast, sometimes conducting more daily operations than LaGuardia or JFK. Seriously, kudos to those guys in the tower. So, South Africa, 3433, by downline 114. Take your turn, turn right on Bravo, back to the echo, and I'll be out of the frequency. And I'm Bravo, back to echo with you. Turn 23, extend that one out, sorry, base. Extend that one, you call my base, 3433. 
Report Belmont Lake for a left downwind runway 14. Belmont Lake for a left downwind runway 14. Think that's easy at Farmingdale. Always easy. And A4, you have to apply for the uh, towards the left downwind. Left downwind runway uh, 14. Just continue your descent, please. Left downwind uh, 14. Before you come. So it's not good. Joe, runway 14, clear touch and go. Runway 14, clear touch and go. So it's not good. So I'm stepping myself on the downwind at 90 knots and 1100 feet. So I have time to fit in the crazy craft station here. Just another day in Farmingdale. Uh, Republic Tower, Cherokee, 8149 Romeo, uh, right downwind, uh, runway 14. Romeo, extend down, I play this. He has been correctly identified the back course. I'm on the ILS, and even though we're not going to fly the ILS, I just want to test the system and make sure it's working. Wind 16014, gust 17. Looks like we'll be number 5 for landing. From an A4 uniform traffic approaching your left wing, 1,100 feet of territory. A4 uniform, heavy traffic inside. Uniform, follow that Cherokee number four. Follow the Cherokee number four, eight four eight four. Okay, so we're turning left base now, following the traffic. I'll keep an eye on him. And one six zero one two gust one seven. And I can see now I have the indication of the ILS and the glide slope here. A4 uniform runway 14, clear to land. Clear to land runway 14, 84 in front. Republic Tower 3433, right downwind around there, 14. 3433, extend that one out, clear your base. And there's the glide slope. First launch flaps. Five hundred. Feel the crab here. 3433 traffic approaching your right wing on final 1100 feet. Uh, traffic inside 3433. 4160, we've got that Cherokee in sight and we're just heading to 260. Yeah, they should be also on the 260, you can follow them. 600, thank you. 4160, we'll follow them. That's an I 5 Alpha, extend that one out for your base. Welcome, 195 Alpha. First 9 0 0, traffic in position, prior to your arrival. Roger. 2 6 9 0 following a Cherokee at your 12 o'clock on a right base joining final 900 feet. Looking for traffic, Cherokee 3577. Almost tower, Cirrus 920, Delta Golf, over north port stack uh, with Fox Rock inbound. Cirrus 930, Delta Golf, Republic Tower. Report them all for a left base, runway 14. I'm an A4 uniform, say parking. Echo ramp. Turn right, Bravo, taxi to Echo ramp uh, via Alpha, this frequency. Bravo and Alpha, this frequency, 84 uniform. Archer, 3802. After landing in Farmingdale, I did a quick stop before departing back to Brookhaven. The purpose of this flight was for me to get comfortable with the new avionics and once again check that everything was working fine. In addition to the Aspen E5, the upgrade included a new stereo audio panel, an Avidyne IFT 540 to replace my old Garmin 430, a new radio and a new transponder. I was very satisfied with the results and felt that I had reached my goal. To have a solid IFR platform with systems that I trust and that can reduce the workload in the cockpit when shooting an approach or flying in IMC. To me, it's all about safety and now I have a safer plane. A 
Big shout out to Icarus Aviation in Brookhaven for taking care of 84 Uniform as if he was theirs. During the two and a half month wait to have the entire upgrade done, I used my time to plan for many exciting adventures that I want to take the plane on. And the first will be a night flight around New York City inside the Bravo airspace. A truly unforgettable experience that still amazes me no matter how many times I've done it. I'll share this and many other adventures through this channel, so be sure to like and hit subscribe if you don't want to miss what's to come. I always try to make every new video better than the last, so please share your comments below and tell me what you liked or didn't like about this one. I take every criticism in a constructive way to help me improve my content and make it fun to watch. Thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, blue skies and tailwinds.